أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن ما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, viewers and spectators Previously, I started my dars on Surah Al-Baqarah and I talked about uh, the individual letters, Alif, Lam, Mim, the knowledge of those individual letters Allah has kept for Himself and then Zalik Al-Kitabu La Riba Fi when Allah informed us the absoluteness of that divine scripture, the last scripture, the last divine writ, Al-Quran. Hudan lil muttaqeen, then Allah told us the subject of that book that is guidance. The guidance is the subject of this book and the guidance for actually the God conscious. Those who are God conscious, who are fearful of Allah, those people and those actual believers are going to take guidance out of Quran. And now, inshallah, I will try my best to explain the attributions and the qualities of those God conscious who are actually God conscious and what is the criteria to become a God conscious, to become a lovable person in the sight of Allah and what are those qualities and attributes and actions and deeds that are required to become closer to Allah, to get closer to Allah. So Allah said, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who believe in unseen and establish prayer and give people out of what Allah has provided to them. Those people are actually believers and those people are actually God conscious. So the first word here is Iman. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ What is the literal meaning of Iman? The literal meaning of Iman is believe. And as we all know, when Allah used this word, a lot of occasions in Quran Majeez, mostly He used this word in a sense, uh, you know, to call believers sometimes. And in very few occasions, He used this word to mean trust. Here, the meaning of this word is believe. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in unseen. The literal meaning of Iman is unseen. And then, in modern psychology, the meaning of Iman is basically the mental state of assurance or conviction in which a mind accept or endorse, you know, uh, its experience basically. So, the state of mind you know that assure something or endorse something or endorse its, its experience that is called belief that is called iman so that is a modern psychological meaning a terminological meaning that society accepts and the literal meaning or terminological meaning of iman in islam is i can say in few words in arabic language there is a famous quotation of Ibn Baz, I think, where he said, Al Iman, Fiwaki al Amr, Al Iman, Al Tasdiqu bil Janan, Al Iqararu bil Lisan, Wal Amalu bil Arkan. The basic thing is confirmation with the heart, and then acceptance with the tongue, and then practice 
uh, with uh, uh, all those obligatories and compulsories. That is the actual Iman. First, we, you know, believe something with the depth of our heart, with the core of our heart. And then we start to accept that thing, acknowledge that thing with our tongue. And then we practice what are compulsories and obligatories according to the commandments of our Creator. So basically, this is the literal meaning of Iman and this is the terminological meaning of Iman also as per the consent of our scholars. And these three things, these three categories of Iman or types of Iman are actually interlinked to each other. They explain each other and they conjunct each other. So if oneself, if one accepts the truth that Allah is one, He is the Creator and He accepts that with the depth of His heart then he start to acknowledging uh, to acknowledge it also then he start to begin to you know accept it also with the tongue and uh, with his quotes and with his sayings and then he start uh, you know practicing also on those obligatories and as well as voluntaries also that allah has commanded his creator his command you know commanded him so that is actually iman and then there is a famous hadith where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us about those five famous pillars of Islam, six famous pillars of Islam. Basically, he said, "Buni al-Islam ala khamsin shahadatu Allah ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah wa iqam al-salah wa ita al-zakah wa sami Ramadan wa hajj al-bayt." This is a famous quotation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We might all we all might know it, and the meaning of it is that the foundation of Islam is laid down on five pillars. Number one is the you know bearing witness of that Allah is the one who is the worthy of worship. There is absolutely none who is worthy of worshipping except Allah. That is the number one belief that is called Tawheed, monotheism. And that I talked about when I, you know, explained Surah Al-Ikhlas. That is called Tawheed. He is our creator. He created us. He is the sustainer. He is the cherisher. He gave us life. So he has the right to be worshipped. So we must worship him. We must acknowledge him and we must recognize him and accept the truth, accept the fact that he is the only one who created all of us, who sustain every single thing and who cherishes also. And the second thing is the acceptance about the prophethood, prophethood or prophecy. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ I bear the witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger and the last prophet of Allah. So basically Allah has sent a lot of prophets, uncountable numbers of prophets. We cannot even count them. And then he put a seal on the prophecy and prophethood on the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said in Quran Majeed, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today I completed for you your religion and I completed my bounty on you. ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا and I chose for you, you know, Islam as a religion. So that is the basic concept. There are a lot of messengers and prophets who came down on on this planet. To illustrate and explain the true commandments of Allah, and they were all, you know, truthful messengers, and we believe in them. This is also one of the basic parts and foundational part of our beliefs. If we want to become true submitters, if we want to become Muslims, so we have to believe about all those prophets, as well as the ayah, the you know, following verse also is just coming. It also said that. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون الذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون. That we have to believe those who actually believe in what Allah has sent down, you know, of those messengers and prophets before Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and then Allah has sent down Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم also along with their commandments, along with their teachings, along with their characteristics that Allah has sent 
along with them. So we have to believe in them or we have to believe in all those characteristics and commandments and we have to follow to you know gain the satisfaction and the contentment that every single human being on this planet actually requires and needs to be a happy person and to you know you know to be up to have a place in life so basically these are the qualities the first quality is alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaib as i said that those who believe in unseen now we have to know that everything every single concept basic concept of islam is unseen we believe in allah we have not seen him we believe in messengers and prophets we have not seen them we believe in paradise we have not seen it we believe in hellfire we have not seen it we believe in the day of judgment and resurrection we have not seen anything we believe in angels we have not seen them we believe in books and you know we believe in scriptures we have not seen them we have not seen any single thing but we believe in them and that is called iman bil ghaib and that is the you know most foundational thing that we have to understand and even even modern psychology you know before few years ago the society was denying the fact that there is anything like unseen but this in this modern society even uh, Arche- big archaeologists belong to Europe. They also accept that unseen is truth, and unseen can lead uh, or lead a human being to um, to empower him. So that is actually a truth, and we have believed actually in all those unseen things, as Allah said, "Al-ladina yuminuna bil ghayb wa yuqimuna salah." And when our belief is strengthened, and strength of ourselves also is strengthens ourselves also. then that believe actually guide us and lead us to offer salah to perform salah to establish prayer to perform umrah to perform hajj and to do all those obligatory and voluntary and commandments to follow those commandments of allah that allah put on our shoulders and enjoin on us and the first thing that allah told us and the first ibadah the first worship is basically namaz alladheena yuqimuna as-salaa those who establish prayer the importance of salah is absolutely Uh, up to the mark we have to understand the importance of salah a lot of occasions quran majid and if we count them we can find out that more than 500 times allah had mentioned the name of as salah mentioned this word as salah the literal meaning of salah i want to tell you is supplication and that's why when we say muhammad when we when we say any name of any prophet we say sallallahu alaihi wasallam of alaihi salam sallallahu alaihi wasallam basically means you know peace be upon him a peace be upon them or supplication be with them so the basic and literal meaning of salah is dua and in islamic term islamic sense salah means a process of worship a process of worship where one prostrates bows down recites quran rehearses the verses of quran and concentrates on allah and uh, you know remind himself the commandments and the signs of allah that allah has spread throughout this world so that is the basic concept of is of salah and the importance of salah is absolutely spot on in lot of occasions quran majid in one occasion allah said inna salata kana ta'ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquda that is the basic thing that salah is actually prescribed and enjoined on believers on fixed time so we have to offer salah we have to perform salah on fixed times on five times and those five times have been explained to us and has been told us by allah himself in quran majid also and then by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in lot of hadith also and then the second thing is anna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar salah it also prevents us from indecency or sinful activities so if someone wants to prevent himself or restrict himself from sinful activities from fahsha and munkar then he has to perform salah because salah is something that can prevent him from sinful activities and that can prevents uh, prevents him from indecency he can be a decent person he can be a good person a happy person in the sight of allah in the sight of human beings also if he leads prayer if he performs prayer if he you know uh, you know performs prayer ya ayyuhal ladina amanu istainu bis sabri was salah that is another thing due to lack of time i cannot stretch my talk but one thing is also 
basically i want to tell you ya ayyuhal ladina amanu stainu bi sabri wa sala a lot of times in our life we go through lean patches we go through difficult patches and we suffer so allah told us a method to cure ourselves a method to gain satisfaction to gain contentment and the method is if we suffer we have to ask allah we have to seek refuge in allah and we have to seek refuge through salah through prayer as allah said ya ayyuhal ladina amanu stainu bi sabri wa sala o oh, those who believe seek help from allah seek help through sabr and sabr is patience perseverance and seek help through salah through namaz so if you if we are suffering through something we have to offer salah we have to be focused and concentrated on allah and the signs of allah and that can actually make us happier and then the other thing the import about the importance of salah is one uh, another thing also there is a hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when a companion of him asked him ayul a'mali ahabbu ila allah so he replied as salah a companion of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him which is the most you can say favorite uh, deed or most favorite action uh, to allah so he replied as salah the favorite action the most pleasant action the sight of allah is as salah is namaz so we have to perform salah on regular basis if we want to gain contentment satisfaction in life if we want to seek help and if we want to prevent ourselves from sinful activities from indecency if we want to live a good life we have to lead we have to perform prayer and establish prayer salah the uh, actual and uh, specific process of worshiping on regular basis and then the other thing is zakah but zakah inshallah i will talk about zakah uh, in my next talk within few days inshallah because i already stretched my talk so it is inappropriate to stretch more inshallah i will talk about zakah within 2 3 days so this is the concept of salah and the concept of salah is actually a concept of worship and worship cannot be done if someone does not believe in allah if someone does not believe in oneness of allah if someone does not believe in monotheism and if someone does not have that actual belief if someone does not have that actual iman and taqwa the consciousness of allah the fearfulness of allah and then the iman the actual belief about allah that he is the one who created us who sustains us who sustains everything and the reflection and the contemplation and the ponder over actual ponder over leads him to perform salah to establish prayer to, you know remember allah to mention his name not one or two but thousand of times in a day that can lead us to a best contentment and satisfaction in the life wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin